What do you think of the new song? Actually, I really love it. It's um, how will I say this? You can tell how much you've matured. Oh, oh awesome! Good. Thank that you. Is, yeah. good time. That's sometimes yeah. the worst thing about starting a, a young as a young band is like your first album, like you've already got somewhere to move to, but people remember you for your first stuff generally. So yeah. it's good to show progression, which is good. So. Hanging with here to Zen tonight, we have Bryce, Brennan, Austin, Sisters Doll. How you doing, guys? Good, good yeah. day, dude. Thanks good. for having us. Appreciate it. All right. So this will probably go live right as you're getting ready to pack to head overseas for the Kiss Cruise. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. Out, started, yeah. We head out, what is it, Thursday morning? Thursday like, it's really early flight. Like, it's like 6 a.m. We have to go to Sydney, stop over for like an hour, and then the big trek to L.A., but... Yeah, it hasn't really hit, hit us yet, but we're we're very excited. Like I think once we pack and get everything ready, we'll be good to go. Oh, but yeah, yeah. And you're on week two, aren't you? Yes, week two. Yeah. yeah. So I think week one starts soon. Yeah, maybe so. this, maybe this week. I think. Yeah. I was about to say, did, was there any random Vinnie Vincent sightings in Nashville? No, we went to we went to SIR Studios actually to pick up. We were hiring some some guitars. I think we were, and we went there. And he was rehearsing that day, apparently. But And we sort of lingered around a little bit. But, yeah, the guy was like, oh, who knows when he'll rock up sort of thing. And then the only time we saw him was um, the promoter got us to go up on stage and sing, like, to make the crowd get involved with the crowd, like us and, like, yeah, Todd Kearns. Yeah. Everyone got up there. And literally that was the only time we actually saw him and like up close because he was very private and, um, yeah, didn't mingle with anyone. I think he just did his fan meet and greet performed on the stage and that was it really yeah. Yeah. seeing that it was a really good event for you anyway yeah, oh was yeah nice. and it ran incredibly yeah, yeah. Was, give a yeah. shout out to neil for what he achieved like he got all four non-members of kiss that are in, not in kiss at the moment you know and, and got them all together at the same event yeah. and it ran smooth like everyone would have thought it would have been a sh shamozzle but it actually ran you know obviously every event has its little hiccups and ups and downs but there was not really anything major that went yeah, wrong, all, really. Right. Well, yeah. 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 Remember, poor guitarist of, of Kiss that has ever been in Kiss, and then you've got the original drama too, so it was pretty cool to pull that off. It was, yeah, it was a big event, and, and you guys played with Peter yeah, as well. Yeah, really. um, you guys have become sort of the unofficial, official Peter Chris Band, which is lovely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bit, yeah. It's a shame he doesn't want to do more shows, like, because then, we yeah, we could literally claim that title of like which they've kind of told us you can claim that title because you are our band when we do big gigs we will always want you know which is very flattering but um yeah it's a shame he doesn't want to go and do more touring which he may want to later on but at the moment he's he's just it's up to him yeah it's up to him yeah yeah i think he, i think he's just happy to be healthy exactly yeah, yeah. He's doing yeah. Good. yeah and um he also got with bruce which i thought was pretty pretty killer yeah that yeah. was cool yeah that was that was very exciting and um on rock and roll that was sick that one yeah was and cool. then him and ace played together they did hard luck woman and strange ways together which was also yep. very cool to see yeah all right now more about you prisoner out now is this yeah. going to be the teaser for the album to come yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It is first single off the album so it's the uh yeah we didn't go into recording the album thinking this would be the first single to be honest um it kind of grew in the studio and we're like and our producer actually suggested he said i think this one will be the one to sort of hit everyone out with you know and we're like okay and um but i think the album's definitely got a lot of diversity in there but it is a heavier album i would say compared to what we've done in the past like we've always done a few heavy songs on the album but this one's probably a little bit more yeah. heavy orientated, yeah. I, I guess. Feel like, I feel like with this one, we've really found our sound. Like, we've really honed in on, this is what Sister's Doll is all about and what it should sound like, I think, like, sonically and musically. and um, Yeah, I think definitely everything. working with Ricky Ray down here, he's done a great job of getting the best out of us. And, um, yeah, and he's just a great guy and great producer. And, like, we couldn't be happier with how it's how it's sounding and like this is only one song we've released but obviously we've got the other ones sort of not they're not all done but yeah you've got them sitting there and you're yeah. like oh i can't wait for people to hear this one and that one so it's very sure. exciting times 
Yeah. That makes a lot of sense, knowing that Ricky Ray's producing, because every band he produces, he actually pulls out the stuff you probably don't think you can do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. He's great. Yeah, he's he's not a producer that controls, he's a producer that guides everything he does, I love. So yeah. you can really hear it on this single, especially the way the the sounds are meshing. To me, the, there's not like a lot of empty space in the song. It's it's all yeah. there, but it's not I hate when I hear a messy song. I don't know if that makes sense to say it like this, but I hate when it's just a whole bunch of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah too yeah. much going and on. And th there's no air, and there's a lot of air. I actually think it's the first time your drums are being captured the way you play. Yeah, I was, yeah, yeah, that's true. Hundred percent. Well, I was. That's the first thing I said, and that um, when it when we come back with like the first mix and whatever, I'm like, it's it's the first song you can actually put on of ours, and the drums are just punching. And this isn't any disrespect to any other producer we've been been to, but that's the thing that I loved about Ricky. He really captured like some of pretty hard hitting drummer live. And then when you go put on some of our past material, it doesn't really capture that as much as when you hear Prisoner. It's like, oh shit, it hits hard. And it's, yeah, I'm so happy with it. It's incredible. I think yeah. as well, Ricky being a drummer himself, he really, um, you know, that's what he loves. He loves drums. And so he he really got the best out of Bryce, our performance wise and challenged Bryce in a lot of ways in a few things as well. And he's yeah, challenged all, all of us, but he's also... He hasn't been one of them ones that's been in there and just like, oh, we're doing it this way, this way, this way. He's always always asking, is that the best way? Should we do it this yeah. way? Should we try this? And so he's, yeah, it's just a really good working relationship and it's shown so far with Prisoner and hopefully the other ones that are to follow will be, um, yeah, people will feel the same. Yeah. And what's the timeline that you're going to go for? Like more singles and an album release? Yeah, that's the plan. So we'll do a couple more singles building up. Not sure if we'll do another one before the end of the year because we're pretty busy. And um, we've got a few tours come, lined up already. We've got the Glam Fest coming up in January and then we've got another, the Crash Diet um, tour in February. So we'll probably bounce a couple of singles off of them tours because we're obviously hitting every state in Australia. Yep. And then, yeah, we're lo probably looking at this stage. I mean, we've got no dates set and lo locked in, but we're probably looking like a March, April sort of release for the full album. So then at least we've got a whole year to sort of push it and yep. it. yeah that's a plan but nothing's set in stone yet <laughs> if, if, if yeah. we've learned anything from the last three years it's don't make plans yeah that's exactly right exactly right and that's the thing with obviously COVID taught us like and that's why the songs on this album are going to be um the best we've done because we spent literally all of COVID writing in our in this room actually and we wrote over 35 songs demos and we just sent every single one to ricky and it became to the point where like, let's we've got to pick the best 12 so out of 35 songs if you can't pick 12 decent ones and that's what yeah. ricky said he said covid was a blessing for you guys because we actually um worked our butts off in here again yeah. yeah so now we've got you know other songs to fall back on eventually but we, I think we picked the best 12 out of the 35, which is exciting. So um, Definitely. hopefully it's a good album. You know, you, you, you release a song, you never know how it's going to go. But so far, so good. And you just hope people like it because that's yeah. what you do it for. You do it for yourself, but you also do it for yeah fans and people out there to gain new fans as well, hopefully. Mm. so When we released it, we forgot about the charts and everything like that. And it was like, yep. people buy the song on iTunes. And, yeah. and, then, and then you see it, it's bang, it was number one for nearly 48 hours like and now yep. start dwindle down but it was just like when you get that sort of um what's the word response and response yeah. and stuff and it's like it's, yeah it's a really cool feeling like the song is getting the recognition that it deserves you know you put all that hard hard work and effort into into it all and then money yeah and money, <laughs> yeah, money. Yeah. Video to the, yeah to everything so it's, it's so cool to see and that thing, like 48 hours, number one on iTunes, we live in a pretty like takeaway drive through sort of society. So that's to me, like back in my old ass days of the eighties, that's like a week number one on the ARIA chart. So I think you did right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks. Yeah. God, no, I mean, like we said, we said to people, we don't know if it means anything these days, but it's kind of just cool to say, you know, you see it up there. You see it up there, you yep. know, like, so yeah. Cause obviously we live in a world now where streaming's the thing. So obviously I don't know what, yeah, you know, you probably only need to sell 100 to hit number one these days. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway. I just, I just think the fact that I opened my Facebook feed and every second feed was Sister's Doll on the day of release, <laughs> that's how you know it's successful to me. 
that yeah. people oh. actually care enough to share. Yeah, that's you know? exactly. Yeah. And because COVID was where everyone, oh, look, I'll just share, share, share. And now we're over that and we're out and about. People only actually share what they want to. Yeah. And I think that's the beauty of your band actually is there's something for everyone in Sisters Doll. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And that's what we tried to do, especially when people hear the full album. Like there's a song for everyone on there. And we've always tried to do that. Like even in our past releases, you know, we've had a couple of heavy ones and then there was a ballad and then there was a few more poppy sort of stuff. Just because it's sort of what we write at the time. And I think this one's going to have a bit of that as well, even though it is probably a bit more of a heavier influenced album. Yeah. It's um, a bit it's more also to write the song. So we're not like writing the songs, trying to cater to people or yep. uh, it's literally just, we're just writing what we feel at the time yeah, and, yeah. and then the music with the style we like and, um, and what we feel sounds good. You know, like it's not trying to write a hit or trying to do this and that's just, you know, it's what, it's what we enjoy and we like it. So we just hope everyone else does too, you know? Yeah, cool. So Austin on the clip, you're playing the solo, so you're playing the solo on, on the song of Prisoner. Right, when yeah. you sit down to do a solo, yeah. are you an off-the-cuff guy? Are you a plan guy? What, what's your approach to it? Yeah, well, for this, for the, uh, like, I mean, for that song in particular, like, I mean, all the songs, it's it, it's different for each one. Like, you know, we, with this one, I was, uh, you know, like, we're in this room just demoing a lot, so we'd have the demo sort of down, and I'd be able to sit with the song and sort of really try to write something that, you know, like, yeah, there's some songs that we have where, yeah, you can do some fast things over it and that, but this one was cool, sort of like, it's a fast song. I'm not doing anything too crazy because, yeah, I, liked, I think of a solo as a, so a solo as a song within a song. So you want to be able to hum along to it and sing yep. along to it stuff. And once the song's done, you're like, oh, yeah, I can sing that solo. Oh, that's great. You know what I mean? That's kind of the thought process that goes into it. I'm not trying to, like, show off in a song. I'm trying to write a solo that fits with the song and benefits the song. You know what I mean? So it's, you know, when the solo comes up, it's not like, Oh yeah, just a whole bunch of this and that, you know, whatever, which you can do, but you know, at the same time, you want to, you need to improve the song and benefit it during that how many seconds that solo is, you know, or whatever. Yep. So, and how do you point. guys decide who is actually going to play the solos? Oh, he's he ki kills me on guitar at any time, so I um I just let him do them now. But I sometimes like I'll come up with a melody or something like. There's one song in particular on the album that. I'm sure when you hear it, everyone will be blown away by the particular solo because it just takes you to a whole different sonically part of the song. And um, me and Austin, even though Austin did all the parts, we sort of crafted it a little bit together, just me and him all together. And like it was almost like getting the best of each thing he could do and putting it into one solo. Yeah. And um, so yeah, even though we all have our parts, like Bryce does the drums, generally I'll do I'll do all the lyrics and the vocal uh, melodies and stuff like that and austin will do the most of the guitar stuff yeah we generally all work together and we all have our own parts and we you know we don't just oh you just do that you just do that we all sort of tweak with between each other and trying to get the best out of the song and yeah i suppose a good thing about us being brothers is sort of no egos in the band like even when we're recording because obviously time's money it's just kind of like well whoever can do it the quickest and the best does it so aussie's yeah phenomenal on the guitar excuse me so um i just say hey you do it you can play it quicker and better than me I'll, I'll figure it out live when i have to but in the studio sense you can do it <laughs> the one thing i want to touch on and this is actually from me personally you guys have some of the best harmonies live <laughs> i've seen Thanks. when you're going in is it something that you obviously you're naturally talented to be able to sing because you know not everyone can sing picking out who's taken the high part, the low part, is that something you really sit and work on before you go into do a song? We do actually, yeah. So like, for instance, with this album and the demos we've done for it, it was, uh, you know, during that time, it really helped us to really knuckle down and um, sort of learn, you know, because we, we've done all the harmonies for each song, obviously, like it's just us in the studio, you know? So yeah, um, yeah we've kind of worked out, you know, who can do what, who does what. So I probably take more of the higher harmonies and then Bryce would take more of the lower ones and, you know, you're doing the main melody or whatnot. But, um, but yeah, the harmonies and stuff, that's just stuff we, um, you know, with the music we listen to. And I mean, me for sure, like I'm always hearing harmonies and it could be a pop song, it could be a, a metal song, it could be, you know, whatever. But I'm always, always listening out for them and stuff. So when, whenever, whenever Brennan would write a song um, and bring it to me or when we all write a song, whatever, like straight away I can hear the harmonies that would work for that and where to put them and, you know, much for us is the same, of course. And, you yeah, know, um, we all are, you know, we all have that same sort yeah. of ear for it. Um, yeah. And I think as well, our second album, Old, Old Up, um, our producer of that album, Zach Millis, he was, he loved harmonies, he loved yeah. big harmonies. So 
we really pushed ourselves harmony wise and he pushed us a lot in that album era when we did all dolled up so i think we went but we did like a lot of the time we were figuring out harmonies in the studio and it took time so we knew for this album when we started demoing we thought if we can get like the basis how we want them to sound and whatever it'll just save a lot of time in the studio and then obviously ricky came in as well and said hey maybe we should try this one and then on most of the time we would probably default to back to what we had but um mm -hmm. yeah sometimes a harmony that ricky would just just took the song from here to here you yeah. know so it's just yep. about trying to, but yeah we wanted to be prepared this time harmony wise because it yeah. does chew up a bit of time in the studio if you're trying to figure them out as you go and, and yeah, trying to hear yeah. them like singing too because it's a full different it's a different yeah it's in its different um world so it's like um and then at the same time too we love the harmonies and but yep. at the same time you don't want to do too many and like yeah. over flood the song with harmonies as well so it's trying to uh pick the right lines of a verse or if you want it on the whole chorus or just a certain part of the chorus you know that's that's sort of important too so you're not over overdoing it we'll definitely yeah. prepare like within the 40 demos it wasn't just like rough as guts demos either like we, mm. we had like 40 or 35 of them and they were like and we um, have the time too so each song yeah. we knuckled down on each one and each part and it, which harmonies was, and, for, and from yeah every yeah. layer yep. that we wanted in the song yeah. know, for pre-production wise it was um yeah it helped didn't it like yeah, yeah definitely all right before i forget whose idea was it to cover king of hearts live um well we got asked we got asked to do a 80s Question. kiss cover thing um yeah at this and when covid sort of was at its point was like we're out of lockdown we're in lockdown so we this kiss tour thing got um we got approached to do that through silverback Three, which was fun and he said but i want you to just do 80s and we're like all right so literally we just went through and picked our favorite 80s songs and that yep. was one of them and yeah we thought that's one song i don't think i've ever heard any kiss cover band or kiss play yeah. ever so yeah. we're like we'll do that one yeah. so, mm. now you were in america not that long ago of course around creatures fest and you yeah. did some some runs through la and vegas what was the response from the american crowd to an aussie band for you guys they're into it they Honestly, love it especially yeah. like you know we you know we're over there not with our fancy lights and little pyros and what we're doing there but we're, we're there just literally Raw the music and but we still put in the the effort and the um um the energy is always there you know so mm -hmm. they love it they're like oh man like he's a exciting and um uh yeah one guy come up to us actually at the whiskey and goes what do you say he goes are all australian bands like this you're a, like you were great like yeah. this like, like he said we don't get like you know new upcoming bands as good as you guys come through and we would say oh we've been doing it a long time and that you know i said we just haven't been to america enough and he's like oh he said i've got to come to australia and i said yeah there's some great talent in australia because yeah. there is yeah and um and the good thing is is because we are going back so soon this time which is good we didn't think we would but um yeah a lot of people that we've met like now with the power of social media you know you become friends with people and that so you know obviously they know we're coming back so they're going to bring some friends this time yeah. and a little bit. so it's it's going to hopefully it'll be interesting to see, you know, yeah. as they do. Yeah. You can see it grow. Like if, if we were living there, it would, um, you could just see it, uh, start to grow, but yeah, hopefully we can keep going back more and more and become a regular. If we keep getting opportunities like this, it's like, yeah, yeah. why not? Like, yeah. So, yeah. Now I'm yeah. not going to try and offend any radio stations in saying this, but do you think Australia's problem lies with our radio stations? Mm. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's rough. Like it is hard. Like, yeah yeah it's hard like well lucky rebel fm um had yep. the exclusive for prisoner and they it got added to like 30 stations up in queensland yeah but yeah it's it's one of them things i mean you 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 can try and try and try but unless someone there likes it or wants to give it a crack it's yeah it's very hard What's yeah. Ricky's yeah. Scared? Yeah. yeah they're like they're scared of guitars yeah ricky goes <laughs> what ricky said goes unfortunately you put a guitar in a song these days it's like all of a sudden they're scared to put it on the radio you know but yeah i have a feeling it's getting back a bit like yeah. I, I feel like rock's coming back a little bit with stuff you know like but yeah, yeah. oh look, and, and dave at rebel he's a legend love dave oh, he's a good yeah. guy yeah. but like if you try and put a radio on in my house it's actually streaming from comp in las vegas yeah, um, yeah. and if you i don't know if you guys have listened to comp radio in vegas no no I just, just stick it on one day and you'll be like holy shit yeah yeah and that's the thing if we just had a station like that where they play the best of everything new and old we'd yeah. probably have a much 
better understanding of all the great bands we have in Australia. Yeah. yeah. Well, the hardest, that's the hardest part because who's going to be the next ACDC? Who's going to be the next um, Motley Crue? Who's going to be the next Kiss? You know, if they don't give these um, upcoming artists the, the, you know, and I know there's a lot of bands out there, but like when you hear the music and it's like, how's that going to, yeah, who's going to be the next rock? You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, yeah, it's, I don't, I don't see it if it's a bad thing to like help support it. So hopefully yeah. over the years, especially if it's like, old. especially if it's like worthy, like, I find, yeah. you know, obviously they can't play everything, but if the song's like, if it's produced well and it's, it's a good, song. good enough yeah. for radio, like it, there's really no reason it shouldn't be played on radio. Even if it's like at like yep. 11 o'clock at night or midnight, you know, obviously they can't play it. Like something sounds like crap. Like yeah. obviously I'm like, yeah. like, there is a lot of bands and yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you would think like, you would think if you, you've, got a decent product there that yeah radios would jump on it but yep yeah i'd love to see him add 10 new songs a week and then at the end of the sunday yeah. night you do a countdown and yeah. whoever gets the most votes right. gets regular rotation yeah, yeah that's that, a great so idea yeah. like that that Fantastic. would be awesome yeah because that's, that's not hard thing. yeah, yeah. And it, what's it going to cost them? Nothing. Like, even if they play it at like, if they did it at like 10 o'clock at night or something, you know, they'd get a poor little following that would tune yep. into that sort of stuff. And it kind of goes for everything too. Like you see music festivals and, and things like that as well. Like if, if they can all kind of jump on board for, um, yeah, yeah, that's a sad thing. You see all these festivals as well, you know, and they've got the same, nothing against them heritage acts, but you know, it's the yep. same six oh, bands. Australia's great. Which that. is awesome. <laughs> But yeah, yeah awesome. like rather than like adding, you know, one because if someone if we got asked by say Red Hot Summer Tour or something like that, we would most probably do it for free just because you know you're going to be playing to, Bingo. you know, as long as you yeah. could sell merch and maybe they pay for accommodation or something like that. But like it would cost them nothing, and it kind of gets a new younger band, not even a younger band, but a new band, you know, sort of out and about. And it's know? crazy you get. I don't know for us as well. It might be because it comes down to the music we play and stuff, but you get more recognition. In a rap, like we're going to play the Kiss Cruise, and then um, and then you don't get um festival opportunities here, and it's like oh, yep. peace out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think yeah. the fact that Danny at Silverback has really put his ass oh, on the line yeah. for Glam Fest, oh, I actually yeah. think it's so, such a good lineup. Oh, yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's um, he's been so great. Yeah. yeah, he's been amazing. Now we've been with him for like the last or well, since just before COVID, and um. Yeah, we can't speak highly enough of him. He's done great things for us and he's always looked out for us. And um, yeah, so uh, for his sake, we're going to have a ball no matter what, but I hope Glamfest goes well. And uh, yeah. by the sounds of it, it looks like it's going to do it's, all right. Yeah. There's yeah. lots of talk, which I can always be assured something's going to go well if the talk at the start isn't just all shit panning like we tend to see online. Everything yeah. I've seen so far about Glamfest is massive, which is yeah. great. And yeah, faster pussycat and Wednesday thirteen, like right after, like before and after each other. That's nuts. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen Wednesday before. No, we've seen faster pussycat, yeah. but not Wednesday. Yeah, probably. just even if, like I say to people, if you're not into his music, just go watch Wednesday because it's just intense, really intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice. Fun, so, what else yeah. is on the go for you guys? Kiss Cruise albums, singles. Uh, what else? Yeah, so the two tours, and then obviously once the album dropped, um, yeah, we'll definitely be touring Australia as much as we can, like balancing it with our own personal lives that's got going on. And um, yeah, hopefully, but our, the goal would be is hopefully the album sort of takes off a little bit, or some of the songs can push us to that next level, and hopefully get some of the more major, you know, support shows in Australia or overseas. And yeah. um, that's a plan. One place we haven't hit is like Europe and stuff like that. So if an, good opportunity comes along even japan we'd love to tackle japan but um yeah it's hard to do it on your own so it'd be good to get like something to like this coming to america because the cruise is there that's kind of the reason we're going and then you piggyback off that so if we could get an opportunity in them other places other countries would be amazing yeah. so yeah what about merch i know there's a merchandiser sitting at the back there so what's going on with your clothing line <laughs> oh yeah, yeah yeah i mean that's kind of that was kind of my side um side hustle with the band um that was pretty cool i kind of launched it i do it kind of, when we get back i might do like a summer drop or something like with it um yep. but i kind of as soon as i saw tommy lee wear the singlet um which was incredible because i sent him some fair mail and whatever 
when yep. I saw that, I was like, yeah, all right, it's done now. Um, that's it. <laughs> it's yeah, like, cool. that's, that's the best I can get to. Um, but nah, it's, um, I'll keep it going, I think. Yeah. yeah. So that's the thing, like everyone, I have to say this to everyone, we get, we're starting to get spoiled for choice. Yeah. But if you don't yeah. buy the tickets, it'll go away again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and you won't be able to blame COVID this time. No, no. no. I think people start to get more confident with ticket buying now that I think everyone's kind of like, all right, yeah, which is cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. Um, no worries. Go kick a whole bunch of ass on that cruise. Well, oh, we will. Thank you. And um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you in January. It'll be fun. Look now it'll be good, it. and we're excited for it too because we're not on like we're not on late for these ones because obviously there's so many other bands on. Yeah. So we get to go and do our thing, and then we can just sit back and enjoy the night. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. Excellent. I'll yeah. see you there, guys. Thanks so no much worries. for Thanks hanging so out much. midnight. No worries. Thank, Thank you. Cheers, Thank Have you. a good night. You too. See you guys. See ya. Yeah. Cheers.